I Wanna Jump Like Dee Dee, with me, Jar Sibold, is the music podcast that does music a bit differently. I'm talking to some incredible musicians, DJs and producers about how they use an experimental mindset to fuel their own creativity, pursue new challenges, overcome fears, bounce back from mistakes. And it seems to have come into my life with some, you know, kind of like sort of alarming regularity, I suppose, which makes me wonder whether I've been sleepwalking for the previous 50 years of my life. Um, so it's it's kind of serendipitous. Um, so it can't be just me that finds it hard to say that word. That my guest today is here today to talk about mindset, and we can talk about that in a bit. She's a multi-instrumentalist, most renowned, I guess, for, for playing drums for the past 10 or 11 years with, uh, with the amazing Cat Power. Um, and also this beautiful, I, I, I really into this sort of distorted kind of snake-like bass with, with Fax. And she signed off from Fax with their latest album, Still Life in Decay, which uh, for me is it's just like this, this really kind of, it's just a masterpiece. I'm totally in, in love with that record. Um, and she's also the first person that I've ever heard talk about a euphonium since I was playing uh, the cello as a as a restless teenager, which I could tell you is a long time ago. Um, so anyway, I'm really excited to welcome Aliana Kalaba to the show. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming on and being part of this uh, this whole kind of serendipity thing. Totally. Um, yeah, just this is just for the record. It's Aliana Kalaba. And I totally get Kalaba because it looks like that, la, la, la. But it's actually... Oh, uh, my God. But it's all good. It's all good. First, first mistake. Brilliant. I've, I've it's done out, myself out, out, out the door. <laughs> Only smooth sailing from now on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah. So, um, so, so, yeah, so originally, so I'd, I'd approached um, when, when Facts had the new, the new album was was announced. Um, there, I, I'm just like... You know, going to sort of explain how we how we kind of got in touch. So, um, I was going to do um, uh, I'd ask the the PR for facts. You know, if we could do an interview with with you, perhaps Brian, and and then it then she said, you know, um, Aliana's uh, leaving facts. So, so yeah. yeah. So anyway, so I did the interview with with Brian for for Moo Magazine, and then I was like, I, I really want to speak to Aliana um you know to kind of talk to her anyway and that's how we kind of got in touch and then when we got in touch it's it, i said that the podcast was about mindset and you're like okay yeah i've been thinking about mindset quite a lot recently so that's kind of the serendipity i'm i'm claiming that anyway <laughs> i like that that works yeah <laughs> but actually yeah I've been, i i was listening i've been listening to your podcasts as i told you before and uh yeah so i know you play cello because you mentioned it before and I was like, yep, we are like of the same mind. I know you're a single kid. You're an only child. So yep. I'm here. Ah, so, yeah. So I feel like we have, we're like starting on the same base of like maybe the, how we started playing music and the trajectory yeah. of what we've done. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I so I, I mean, just, so I started, uh, um, I think when I was about, maybe about eight years old. Wow, yeah, that's young. Okay. So, yeah. Um, sort of going into the going into the cello. Uh, my my kind of background was it with it was a perhaps a little bit different to us, but I'd be interested to hear your experience. I felt over the years, and it probably got worse as the years went on, that I kind of been forced into it. Okay, right. And that's, that's why a... I kind of ended up giving it up. <laughs> well, mine, so um I guess so originally I went to the school Lane Tech here in Chicago and you could pick a major. So I chose music as my major. And my whole idea before going into there was oh, I'm going to do percussion. That's going to, that's going to be how yeah. I get to like learn how to play the drums. Mm. And, um, and so when I, I got accepted there and I was like, got into the program and I was like, yeah, I want to do percussion. Uh, and they're like, yeah, we have too many percussion players. I'm like, okay, uh. about saxophone. Now we've got enough saxophone players. Um, they're like, we're going to put you on trumpet. So I was like, uh, okay, I guess I'll do trumpet. Um, so I did trumpet for a while and then until my like sophomore year, and then I got braces. Ah. And so braces with trumpet does not mix. You're, mm. you know, the embouchure trying to make a, a good sound. So I get wax in my teeth to play the trumpet. It's awful. It's a mess. So oh, that's when I started you for it's got a bigger embouchure like a bigger mouthpiece mm. but that's where i i really love that 
instrument because it's uh it was bassier there was a lot more solos that i could do on my own because yeah. there was only two euphonium players and when the other guy left i was like the main person and uh it was really freeing to be able to do that and i think about that now think about playing bass and these like really like heavy uh bassy tones notes mm -hmm. um i really enjoyed euphonium um, mm -hmm. So I wasn't quite fortunate, but it wasn't the instrument that I wanted to play. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do percussion. And in this school, we also had to take lessons, like private lessons. So my mom had to pay for lessons for euphonium, which I didn't even want to do, and trumpet. Uh -huh. So I, I spent, my mom spent all this money on all these years of me playing these brass instruments. And then after that, I didn't even do anything with that. So, but I, I just... No, I did on. do like theory during school and that, mm. you know, I didn't retain all of that, but that was like a, a learning thing too. That's interesting. I mean, I did the, yeah, I did the, I did the theory as well. I did, I did kind of like, you know, exams, uh, you yeah. know, the sort of the, you know, the practical exams. Um, okay. And then I did, I did some theory. I didn't go as far as I could have done with the theory. Um, right. But I did as much as I could be bothered. Uh, uh, I guess the minimum. The minimum that I yeah. needed to do, you know, I, I kind <laughs> right. of like sat in the exams trying to sort of work out the kind of chord changes and all that sort of stuff. And it was just like, oh, God, I it's just want lot. to play. And, right. And that was the thing, too. In my school, we would have our concert band and then I'd go to theory, but they mm. never made it practical to bring theory into concert band. So to my head, it was like this separate thing that seemed like science and it was math and all these things. And I didn't know how to relate it to music. So it was a weird way of learning theory that way. That's a really you know, good point. I, I'd actually, that's a really good point. I'd never actually thought of it like that, but that's that's a really that's a really good point. That and that's yeah, that that disconnect between the right. the theory and how to then take it into into yeah. kind of practice. They just two didn't just meet at all. It, it, yeah, for me, yeah, I was because I thought about it recently, and I was like, why didn't they bring all of that back into concert band? But our conductor and concert band just wanted us to be a good band. He didn't care if we knew theory. This theory yeah. guy didn't care if we knew music. He's just teaching us, you know, but if you could apply theory to while you're playing, that yeah. would make more sense. And I would have retained more of that, I believe. You know, it's, like you have your, your circle of fifths. You're like, what is this crazy diagram? How does this, yeah. it's like, is there even music in this thing? <laughs> you know? <laughs> there's, there's, de there's definitely a sort of parallel with, um, you, you know the you know your mum sort of playing paying for your you know kind of brass lessons and then that's not actually the instrument that you want to do I mean I guess in a, in a way that was kind of like what what I had you know I was you know my dad was paying for you know for 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 less for cello lessons yeah but I, I the and the longer it kind of went on the more I knew in my heart that this wasn't wasn't for me but I carried it on for a for a period of time I guess to to please him and that was the, in me that was the people pleaser in me right right how which, how so how old were you when you stopped playing or taking the lessons I was uh when I stopped I think I was probably I was either 16 or 17 when I stopped okay. and um I I never touched it again for until it was just sort of pre pre-covid Okay. And I went and I went into a record store in uh, sorry not a record store into an instrument store in Soho in London because I'd, I'd started to and I don't I I don't know I, I this is where I get really interested in how your brain works because I think that you know my my parents were getting really old you know they they both actually died last year both of them I'm and, sorry. yeah and and then but. Uh, I think in the lead up to me actually going into this store, they've been, um, you know, I knew, I knew what was happening. I could see what direction things were going with, with their lives. And it, I think that triggered a, a kind of a bit of a niche in me to, um, I don't know, maybe in a way just sort of prove something. So anyway, I, I went into this store and asked if I could just sort of pick up an instrument again. And, and fortunately sort of put me in a little room and closed the door, you know, so nobody could hear. And, yeah. and when I picked up the instrument again, so it was the first time for probably, what over over 30 years that I picked it up and like all this this these kind of memories sort of came back stuff that I'd forgotten about kind of came back and it's, it's amazing yeah. the power power of that instrument that it had over me it was incredible yeah. maybe that was also you wanted to make a reconnection with your father 
in a way, right? Yeah, I think it <laughs> was. It was. He wanted he wanted you to play that, and this is like your connection yeah. back with him, the feelings you had. Yeah. When he was like, play this instrument. Yeah. Because <laughs> he, you know, because he, I, I, I know, and and I, I think I probably sort of felt guilty and probably sort of selfish because he, he, he bought me a, you know, at the time it was sort of quite an expensive one. Yeah, and yeah. then when I gave up, when when he knew that I'd given up, he sold it. Okay, okay. <laughs> Were you sad and, about that? No, yeah, at the time I wasn't. He was. <laughs> right, 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 right. But I, yeah. I was like, no, I, yeah. I was like, okay, um, this, I, I felt resentment, I guess. T towards your father. Yeah. Yeah. And now you're doing this, like, recalibration to, like, bring him back. Yeah, in that yeah. way. I'm so um, transparent. I know it's it's crazy, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah. I was just thinking. My mom also played cello when she was younger, but she she uh, played accordion too. That was like her first love was accordion, and her yeah. parents bought her an accordion back in the day when it was I think like it must have been like in the fifties, but super expensive accordion back. Yeah. I don't know three thousand dollars back in the day. Yeah. But it just reminds me of you and a parent buying you this instrument um, and you letting go of it, but bringing it back. But I feel that too, like uh, I haven't played euphonium since high school, but if anyone was like, can you play euphonium on this album? I'd be like, hell yeah, let me try. Yeah, give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> let's see what happens. My teeth might fall out, but hey, let's try it. <laughs> I, 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 and you, you would, you would, what what I found, and I'm sure you would find it, is uh, you know obviously be, you know being a you know kind of professional musician as well. You 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 would it would come straight back to you. You know it might need some practice, but it comes straight back to you. Yeah, I mean it's just like the muscle memory or like embouchure is different. Like the same when you're playing guitar, you know yeah. you've got to like play it for a little bit, and then yeah, it's like riding a bicycle. You get back into it, and I'm yeah. sure yeah, maybe not as good, but you could do it. You could you can still do it. Yeah. Well, yeah. there you go. There's the message out there. <laughs> do you still have that cello then that you went to I, no, I, I i i bought my no i don't i bought myself no so i didn't buy that um and I, I, after that experience i kind of like um covid came along and i didn't do anything with it but i bought one uh probably about six months ago okay yeah. Yeah. And kind of and start, so start, start, yeah, started practicing and practicing and practicing. Yeah. You know, and, uh, like you say, you know, the muscle memory and it's, it's still there. It was really weird how it was still there. Was um, it satisfying again to like play? Mm. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Isn't that fun? I mean, it's such a cool yeah. thing. The other thing I was thinking about too, just since you said you're playing cello and I, I'm assuming, did you play, you played in like a, an orchestra or a band yeah like I, I yeah i did um so i i i got my, um basically in, in the uk i got to the to the top grades that you could do okay and i, pl I played in a i played in an orchestra i played in the school orchestra till i was okay. kind of 16 or 17 yeah yeah i was thinking though like one of the things i did love about playing in concert band i liked a lot of it but i was just thinking about this today um <clears throat> being really tight when you're reading music and you have a conductor mm. and the satisfaction of like playing with other people and everyone is just solid you know and, and so tight and it's a yeah. different thing when you play in a rock band like mm. because there's there's not a technically a conductor sometimes Sean is my conductor you know in yeah. a way he's our yeah. conductor but uh in other bands um to really get tight and solid in that way can be tricky. And mm. I've done that with facts like Noah, our drummer, such an amazing drummer. Yeah. So yeah. tight and solid. But I was thinking about that satisfaction you get when you are super tight with other musicians in your band. And so when I did that in high school, playing mm. concert band, that's when I first felt that like, wow, this is amazing. You can create these sounds with these mm. people and um, it be really tight in that way yeah. because you have this like it was almost like a metronome when I'm thinking about it now I love playing to like a click track because it's yeah. like the satisfaction of like hitting it right on the yeah like so right tight. on the nose yeah yeah but uh, did you feel that way like playing music in a concert band 
like setting versus playing in a band yeah was there, you connected was, or like did you enjoy doing concert band or orchestra i i i did i well i would have done but I, so, so at school I, my my music teacher was a brute <laughs> he really fucking was honestly he was <laughs> I, I used to be i used to be petrified of him yeah. the thing like he, he was he was violent as well he was physically violent oh, okay. so yeah. i you, you know i kind of yeah he was a scary guy to be around when you right, right. you know kind of like early teens you know yeah. even when i I remember like when I first went to school uh, to to sort of high school and you know people said the other kids were saying to me the the ones in the year above like basically on the sort of first first day or two were saying whatever you do do not get into the choir do not pass that test do not get into the orchestra do not pass that test right. so what did I do I passed the fucking of test course, and I... did, yeah <laughs> <laughs> that so, was my yeah so I, I I would have done I would have done because I know I know exactly what you mean that that kind of that feeling when when things click and it's just perfect solid it's just solid so satisfying in that yeah. way yeah 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 my teacher he was kind of he was a little he was goofy but he was also like strict but then we would like he was an older fellow so I remember we would do these one on one sessions with him where we would have yeah. to sit in a I mean, you'd have to listen to us play and say, oh, this is good, this is bad. And you'd be playing and you stop. You're like, you want to look over at him. What What are you thinking? He's like asleep. <laughs> he's just like taking a nap while he's supposed to be listening to you. I'm like, this is what I'm, I'm paying for this. <laughs> Anywho, yeah, that's our, yeah. So, that, so that, I mean that that feeling when you know when you when you were young, sort of playing in those, those sort of groups. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask if if that if that kind of felt, um, you know, when it when it went right, did it sort of feel intuitive. And the reason I ask that is because the 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 music that you played with, certainly with with facts, almost seems there's a there's a kind of psychic kind of intuition between between the three of you. And I'm wondering if that, if that, if you also felt that in the, you know, when you were kind of like when you were younger playing in, 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 you know, different groups, perhaps. Yeah. Um, I guess, uh, I think like, I've been thinking about this too. I always think about this, but playing music is a conversation, right? Mm. And like, if not, if people aren't present, you can't create a thing. You can, but, but it's not true and it's not honest. And so I've been in other bands where um, I've played and I, I try to connect with people, whether mm. it's like emotional or if it's technical. Mm. And I think, I think with facts, we had something really special just with at the place that we were all at, or me personally too, mm. um, to feel so solid with other musicians in your band that you don't have to think about what they're doing yeah. because you know that they're solid. And I, like, I think about Noah playing and, um, and it's also like, I think cause I'm a drummer, I was, I'm a drummer too. Mm. And it was fun being outside of the drumming. Cause it's like, here's the drummer. That's where I normally am, but I'm over here. And now I get to play with the drummer. It was really cool. Yeah, yeah. But to be so solid with someone. And it's like, if you are like, the the thing where it's like I'm gonna fall back and you catch me and I trust that you're gonna be there. Yeah. Because I, I just trust you and I know where you are. So um there I think there is part intuition, but it's also uh a connection with the other people that you're playing with and and mm. really trusting that they know what they're doing. Mm. Uh, so with those guys I could relax because the solid foundation is there with Noah. And yeah. um, so if someone's on the same page as you, you don't have to think about that thing and you can kind of be free. It's yeah. same like, listen, if you have a metronome or a click track, you play, you do that and you know you'll be on time, but yeah. you can kind of be free because that's one less thing you're thinking about. Yeah. I'm just, I'm realizing this too, as I'm talking to you to like try to explain it. But yeah. um, so other bands, 
a lot of other bands were just more like rock or punk mm. rock and let's just get in the room and we're going to play together and see what happens yeah yeah so i think with facts it felt there was a lot there is a lot of intuition but mm. it's trust as well it's it's interesting you say that because i i, I did mention this this kind of thing to brian um you know when we you know for for moo magazine for the interview that we did about still life in decay and and i, I was we i i mentioned that um you probably know it, but that you know that that soundtrack that Miles Davis did, um, elevated to the gallows. Yeah, or he watched so the. Yeah. Yeah. So that that I mean that again is 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 what you're saying. You know, it's that that kind of trust and that that connection, that kind of mind connection. Yeah. That's there. We I think it's just incredible that that can that that works. It's really hard to explain something so kind of intangible, isn't it? I guess it is, yeah, but it's it's also like um also trusting in yourself or or being able to be okay with mistakes. When he yeah. did that soundtrack, that was live. Yeah. Right? He did it, yeah. I think he did it. Amazing. I'm not sure if it was one take, he just watched the film and that was it, right? Yeah. So yeah. You trust yourself to be okay with any mistakes. And I always I, I'm always talking about this, like um a lot of those songs that we did, whenever we record facts. We would do everything in like one or two takes, possibly yeah. three. Or when we um, even rehearsed songs, if it didn't come quickly, we would scrap it because it yeah. wasn't feeling right. Yeah. So instead of like taking a year or many, many things and restructuring it, we kind of just went with this flow, which I thought was pretty cool to mm. um, just go with what felt right. And um so yeah, it's it's this intuition, but being okay with these little things that maybe are wrong, but I think it's so beautiful mm. in a recording when you hear a little slip up mm. and that's the only time that will ever happen. I'm yeah. still life and decay. I have some slip ups, but they miraculously worked. Yeah. And you'll never know what they are. I'll, I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll, you, you, you completely <laughs> lost me because it, it sounds fucking perfect to me. I'd never know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the same. I was like, "Wow, I, I I fucked that part up, but that actually works. So I'm gonna keep that in there." So, but that's what I'm saying. Like when you try to perfect something, it almost it loses. Yeah, it's like spontaneity and beauty in the thing that is happening in that moment. It'll never happen again. So, yeah. so trust that that thing is beautiful in its own way, without yeah. hacking it. Up. So many people you know we record on these things where you can edit and re-edit and overdub and all this mm, mm. and yes it's perfect but then you lose this essence of what the thing is it's interesting and, isn't it because because the, the you know the the i guess the you know the most uh you know some of the the huge music artists you know the you, you know that I guess in a way that that sort of public public image, you know, the and the, this this um, this kind of notion of perfection, you know, in in basically kind of everything that that, that we do, whether it, and again, it could be the music industry, it could be in, in anything that, that we do, that there's almost like a societal pressures to to be perfect, you yeah, know, yeah. And, and it and it's completely it's complete madness. I mean, I've I've you know I've tried it myself, and it's it, it's yeah. stupid. I know it's being <laughs> stupid, but you. You, you get kind of sucked into it sometimes and yeah. and, and you, you're, I totally agree you're absolutely right that you lose the essence of something when you try to go down that route yeah and I, I was actually just I was hanging out with someone in London when I was just there mm. and um he he's in this band that's pretty well known and he got mm. a chance to like be the person that like mixed and mastered this album because his bandmates didn't want to yeah. And he was like, at, at that time, at, at my age, at that time, I didn't know. He's like, if I did that today, now, he's like, I would have been, I don't know how I would do it because he's thinking about the label and who's listening and all these things. He's like, yeah. back then I was young and I didn't even know what I was doing, but I took yeah. this chance and I tried these things and he's like, and I love it and it's beautiful. And that's the yeah. thing when we, when we think about it too much to be too serious yeah. or Think about what is everyone else going to think you've lost then you've lost yourself yeah you know and, and of course we 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 have our peers and of course we want to have other people 
listen to us and yeah. say, yeah, it's a great album. Um, but I, it was really cool to hear him say this, like yeah. to be reminded that like, go with your intuition and your spirit and maybe yeah. it's wrong, but that's okay. Cause that was that one moment. And hopefully you'll, hopefully you'll have many more moments to try yeah. something, you know, instead of like being so like, I'm going to make this one the best one. It's going to be this. And that's going to be what I give to the world. Like, I just enjoy when people have the freedom and I, I'm so inspired when people trust themselves. Yeah. And even if you don't trust yourself, because sometimes you don't, you don't know what's going to happen, but that's the beauty of it. Yeah. It's to not, like we didn't, we didn't rehearse this conversation between you and me. We don't have it yeah. written down. If we did, it would be super dry. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> So Absolutely. Way. Let me let me dig let me dig my notes out. We've had too much frivolity. Let's let's tone it down a bit. Let's get dry. You know? <laughs> no, it's, you're right. I mean, I, I remember like you, you know from like over the years, even from like when, when I first started listening to music, or you know, kind of seriously. I mean, my my sort of first love was was uh, was the Ramones and sort of punk rock and all that kind of stuff. And um, and and I used to love when you when I bought if I bought a live album when you know there'd be a wrong chord played yeah you know and because you, you you'd listen to the studio album you know kind of like so studiously and then you so so those wrong notes would kind of come out or if a beat was sort of slightly off or whatever but i used to love that because i mean it kind of like for one thing it made me feel good about myself it's like well if you know if they're gonna fuck something up then that's okay you know <laughs> that's funny <laughs> Yeah, I used to not like live albums. And I think because I would hear the original recording and in my mind, that's what it sounded like. And when you heard the live, you're like, yeah, but it doesn't sound like what I remember. Yeah. And so I remember not really enjoying live albums because of that. <clears throat> yeah. But when I think about it now, I guess that's where I've shifted is to like mm. be enamored by these live moments. And um, same with our this last album. <clears throat> Mm. is really special to me because the way we recorded it is was different than our other albums and this was mm. something I had always wanted for all our other albums it was like the one thing that Brian and I kind of did not agree upon mm. how they were re produced and recorded mm. and our other albums are beautiful in their own way um but this last album was super special to, to me because I feel like sonically each one of us Brian, Noah, and I have our own sound, you know, Brian, yeah. uh, Noah tunes his drums a certain way. Brian has all these amazing guitar tones and what he does. And, mm. and what I did too was like, for me, very special. I tried to create this sonic environment, whether it's just behind me, but to feel it um, recorded if live, it's a more of a live album to me. Yeah. And so, um, the other ones they're beautiful in their own way but i felt like our true sound was not uh set out into the world yeah yeah the way that i, mean, I, that I would want them to be i mean but, it sounds yeah sort of carry on no but they're yeah they're, those are their own ways and i remember talking to brian about like uh <clears throat> he was like well to have a recording of us is one thing and to see us live is another, mm. which I love that idea. Like it yeah. is a separate thing, but I was also like, but no one really, we don't play as many shows as people will hear the record. <laughs> that was my, my one thing, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. It, it kind of feels that, yeah. I mean, I mean, just off the, off the top of my head, the, I think the, the space in the in the record the, there's more it feels like the, the, there is more space because obviously the fact's been a you know quite a what's the word dense sounding i guess the, you know it's, it's 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 a very dense sounding band and there feels more space in 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 this record which which kind of give gives it for my 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 ears anyway kind of more more power yeah and i think that's what uh, to me this is not a dig to, to anything, but to anyone, to anything, any album. But when I listen mm. to some of our old albums, I, I kind of feel like trapped in them. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I almost feel like it's uh, a plant that is like 
here's this plant and it's growing and now let's put a terrarium over it. Yeah. And we've put it in this case and you can still see it, but it's behind this glass mm. and it's growing, but you see it in a different way um, with production over it yeah. or, or sounds. Um, so they're their own thing in their, their own way. But to me, I like the freedom of hearing what is the true sound and what's coming out. Of course, there's mm. bands I love that are produced and they should be produced and mm. um, have compression and do certain things to them that create specific sounds. I think for me, uh, I'm always just thinking sonically, I want to be like enveloped by a sound. Yeah. And that's why it's cool to see like live shows because it's, it's never the same as like listening to a recording unless you have an amazing sound system. Mm. But um, to be enveloped by sound sonically, you know, whatever the song is, like when you hear that thump of a bass in your chest or like the kick drum and if it's a live situation, those mm. are the things that I really enjoy because they're do tactile. You like, do, you, do you like the idea of, um, you know, kind of s songs that you've recorded maybe, I don't know, like, you know, a few years ago that they they change? You know they can they can kind of like evolve you know either in a you know you know kind of live setting or you can kind of rework them so that they become almost like living documents if you will so you're saying like if if i recorded something one way and then we've played it later and yeah. it's turned into something else yeah well i i guess with like facts we've we've made so many we've made enough albums that we didn't really have to like rehash a lot we didn't we've played like older songs but we yeah. always had new material to keep playing so i don't know i guess the more you play something you find the little nuggets of something and maybe you'll switch a couple things yeah to keep yeah. It fresh to you um or or yeah you let go of like oh i didn't like what i did in this recording here i'm gonna change it but just enough that it mm. makes it fresh to me because you don't want to change the essence of the song yeah but you want it to be true to yourself when you play it live. You have to be intentional and be present to play live. Yeah. To me, I feel like, and to to be honest with your audience of what you're playing. Yeah, yeah. Like to never dial it in. And it's, in those in those moments, that's when you should not should, but when you can like rehash it or look at it from another angle so that it's fresh yeah. to you, so that you're not just like, okay, here's the next note, da da da, here we yeah. go, and that you know the the uh be before we started recording the band um you know it's just uh, you know that we were talking about a certain ratio so they um i think they, they brought an album out 2020 and then they brought out a um i think in 2021 so a year later basically a remix version of that album and they basically handed all the track different tracks to different producers and the the sole remit was just to interpret the song how they feel and and it's really weird because the, because because the album is is then i mean it's completely different it's turned on its head and i i was i was completely fascinated by that so there, there's there's one track in particular that i really love um and the, and I, and i actually think i probably prefer the remix version because it's just so, and but it, it's totally changed the the feeling that it gives me listening right. to the original and then to the remix makes me feel like a completely different person. I just love that idea. I just think, I just think it's so great. That you can have this one song and create something totally different. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's cool about. Yeah. Remixes. Yeah. So many remixes I've heard. I'm like, yeah, I like that one better than the, <laughs> the original. Yeah. I better keep quiet about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it, I think it's interesting. It's like the power of interpretation, isn't it? Right, right, right. Um, yeah, what someone first hears, and that's what collaboration is too. Like, mm. uh, what someone if they remix an album, maybe they hear the three chords of that song yeah. that the people who originally wrote that was not even they did, that was like a past that that was like a passing thought to them. Yeah, but you put down to the thing that uh, gets to you. And, and that's where you start. Um, yeah. And that is a cool, it's a cool interpretation of, of, yeah. uh, of something that someone else has done. That, you know, kind of self-belief 
you know, is, I mean, I, you know, for me starting this podcast was, um, was like a real deal. I, at the time I was, so I started it in 2021, beginning of two. So I've just, yeah, it's just been going just over two years. This is a baby. And I, and I had to be, I, I was sort of kicking around, um, you know, what am I going to do? What am I going to do with, with my life? You know, I, I, I was like, I don't know. I was really interested in this mindset stuff. I've always been really interested in, you know, kind of the future and what the, what, fu- you know, better futures and what future living might look like with all these, um, you know, kind you of big, in, big, big changes general, going on. Yeah. General, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and and you know, seeing that there's there's so much big change kind of happening, you know, through you know, kind of demographics and technology and stuff like that, and um, you know, the world is so much more, you know, sort of volatile and complex to to sort of get around that, that, that which is what kind of got me into thinking about mindset, about why mindset was sort of so so important. These these kind of like intangible things like um curiosity and um adapt to being adaptable and things like that that are just really important that aren't necessarily given the uh the time when when you're at school you know and things like emotional intelligence when you're at school so I was really interested in that kind of stuff and yeah. you know obviously sort of you know kind of self-belief self-awareness that that kind of stuff um but self-belief is something that I'd always struggled with you know throughout throughout my life and you know the whole thing of you know sort of imposter syndrome and you, you know i've i've had that through my life and so when it comes to you know as my partner was was talking about you know started this podcast and i didn't really listen to podcasts i did occasionally but i, I yeah. you know i've always been more of a reader i would, I would read things yeah. and, and then there was yeah, you know, I was just looking for excuses. You know, it's just like, well, you know, basically when it came down to it, I was just like, well, nobody's going to want to listen to me talking. <laughs> That's the same. That's why I was like, I don't know if I want to do. Who wants to listen to me talk about <laughs> me? Being like, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who who knows? Yeah. Anyhow, go ahead. Yeah. So so that so yeah so that that that, that kind of self belief and that uh, you know it was around you know who who's what 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 am I going to react like when I get my first uh yeah no thanks or just somebody just doesn't reply you know to if I send them an email and you know I don't get a reply I'll feel rejected you know that that kind of whole thing so there's a confidence and self-belief you know similar to what you were talking about about you know your songs it's like I don't like it and like oh I don't like my voice in this podcast and all this sort of stuff you know it's your mind isn't it yeah well here's the thing too because you're an only child and Mm. I think about that too because like you've spent mm. a lot of time alone because i know yeah. I, like we're both only children so you grow yeah. up alone. so you're in your thoughts alone all the time you come up with your own imagination but i also think that that's kind of what created that's why you have an interest in what you're doing right now um mm. i think like you have thought when you're an only child you have a lot of time to think because there's no one distracting you even though I've always wanted like a brother, I, I had two older cousins, two bad yeah. cousins, and then they were kind of gone when I was like 13. So I always wanted an older brother again. Um, but yeah, we have all this time to think about stuff. And I think yeah. if we had siblings that might be different, mm. we would be different people. We wouldn't True. be as uh, patient or be able to listen, yeah. you know, in another way. Um, so, um, uh yeah thinking about uh what, yeah that, I, yeah it's sort of be, being alone and that that like in, in your thoughts and that um yeah you, you, you kind of you, i guess you, your mind tells you it, it it it's got that protective thing hasn't it you know so it's it's kind of protecting you from what it perceives to be dangerous situations like you know i'm going to go yeah. and do this well there's a chance that you're going to get hurt because you're going to get rejected or people are just going to think you're a dick and stuff like that right right yeah so yeah so, talking so your mind's you telling you no don't do it don't do it i guess so but do you also feel like you didn't have as much um to me i feel like 
there wasn't like a sibling that was like, get out of my way, you can't do this. So, so I was like, this is who I am. There's no one else. I didn't think about it at the time, but like, there's no one putting you down or you're not a middle child or the youngest or the yeah. oldest. So your world is just your own. It's just your own. And I also felt that, that I, when, when I was growing up, especially when I was at home, that there was the spotlight on me from, from my mum and dad. Right. Because I was yeah. the only one that, yeah. that was around, you know? So it's like, <laughs> it's all on me. And it's just like, ah, yeah. I don't want to be well, in the spotlight. And you felt the pressure. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's just, I didn't feel a pressure. My mom never mm. forced me to do anything. Mm. Um, but I think this is where psychology like can go backwards. Like if someone gives you too much praise and you get into the real world, yes. <laughs> you're like, wait, this is not, how, this is not the, what I was learned. Like, I thought I was a great person here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or everything I, I did was amazing or whatever. And you get mm -hmm. into the real world and you're like, no, I've got to like fend for myself, figure these things out and mm -hmm. um, prove myself in a different way than maybe someone had uh thought me to believe that i could mm. do things and roll with it but also the, the, the i mean there were times i mean you know my mom and dad were really good to me i mean they they supported me a lot but also there were times when i i and it's re it's weird now at the age that i'm when i look back and the things that i remember from when i was a kid yeah. you, you know stuff that sticks with me that you know yeah. where which you know sort of i i can attribute to you know you know how sometimes I have trust issues, and also um, when I when I feel that I've 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 not been good enough, you know, from stuff that they've said that maybe I wasn't supposed to hear some of the stuff I was supposed to hear, and okay. that sticks with you, you know, and yeah. it, and it it definitely it, uh, it you know, I'm I'm absolutely convinced of it. It's definitely kind of shaped how I've how I've behaved and some of these you know kind of things like imposter syndrome and stuff like that where yeah. I thought I'm not good enough. And that's the thing that too that um, I I actually didn't really understand until last year. Uh, like I went through a huge life change, and mm. that our childhood. There's so many people that are like, yeah, we know who have gone to therapy. They're like, yeah, of course it's your childhood. Um, yeah. But there are things that I thought I was okay with. I was like, yeah, mm. I totally had a handle on this. Yeah, this and this happened, but I'm totally mm. solid. But when I really dug deep down into it, um, I was like, oh, actually, there are some things that are unresolved that, mm. that are dormant in me. And I need to figure out how to solve that because mm. I thought that I had solved it. Mm. I thought I was OK in certain awesome. aspects. And as we get older, uh, you see these patterns that you do and you realize it's not the world around you sometimes it's mm. you in yourself that is the the one factor that's like creating all these things so um i've come back to my childhood a lot or just how we were raised and not in any bad way or good way like uh, mm. our parents went through things mm. and that's how they raised us it's not their fault yeah yeah whatever happened to them in their life is how they've raised us yeah they were our age you know and right now when i think about like having a kid when you're in your 20s i could not even imagine that yeah, yeah i know <laughs> like, i know with the pressure of that um so we there's no blame on anyone it's just like coming to terms and trying to figure out okay this is how i, I was raised this is how my parents were raised my parent and, yeah. and where do I go from here to try to yeah. make things okay now yeah. uh, with my life or uh, my relationships with other people? Yeah. Just based on what we've had, but also those things, whether good or bad, have formed us yeah. and who we are. Maybe you wouldn't have this podcast. You wouldn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the yeah. way our lives turn out because of how we were raised. It's yeah, a, yeah abs absolutely right. I, I, I mean, you can, you can easily see how it's a you know it's a it's a generational thing that it that these sort of things take generations to sort of work out it, and that's even if we start now with you know kind of educating kids you know from a very early age you know about emotional intelligence right you know about your self-awareness about your empathy 
if you don't start teaching, if you start teaching that now, it's still going to take generations for it to kind of like wash through in any way. Right, but we, right. we don't, we don't, you know, you know, kids have this sort of innocence that's soon kicked out of you. Well, that's the thing too. I feel like, well, that's one thing too, is to always remember your innocence, always to remember being a child and look at things with like fresh eyes, fresh mind, because mm. we do get older and we forget about that and yeah. we become stagnant and we don't move forward. But I, I do think that, I think like the younger generation, I think there are some people, when I think about my friends raising their kids mm. and being there in a way that our parents couldn't, um, or being more um, mentally aware and spiritually or whichever way spiritual yeah. means to you, but instilling that in children where they can um, understand where they're coming from. So I mm. think that it is shifting for overall for like a, the newer mm. generation. They're figuring things out more yeah. for themselves. Unfortunately, though, also social media and all this is like the other backwards and the, it's the creating more. I so not even imagine having Instagram when I was 12. Yeah, and totally. It would be so, it's hard now. Yes. <laughs> okay, can you even imagine in these formative yes. years of, of having that? It would be really exactly. weird. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I, it's, it's, I mean, the, um, I, I've, I've, like over the past maybe, hmm, I don't know, maybe six years or so become more uh, um kind of like in tune with i guess this you know kind of you know buddhist idea of impermanence and you know you know and that's made me more aware of my my own sort of identity shifts and of course you know we you know we're shifting identity all, all the way through our life but i've definitely become more more self-aware of of that sort of shift and who who i am as a as a person and maybe think about, you know, kind of how it feels like a previous life almost. Yeah. It's really no, it's, weird. It's, like a, it's almost like a rebirth. I mean, it's like a rebirth. And I, not to mm. get into, because sometimes that those are strange words and ideas yeah. to yeah. get into the world. But like what I went through was a rebirth. It was an acknowledgement of like, oh, this is who who I was as I went through this life and mm. I can see myself now what happened to me mm. and um accept that and move forward mm. uh but yeah seeing you you're you're like it's a it's a another life yeah it, it's being able but we wouldn't know this I was thinking about this too you cannot tell like a 15 year old um everything's going to be okay mm. and they listen it just doesn't work that way because they haven't had enough time on this planet yeah. it's our patterns it's the things that like if you fall in love once you think that's the, the only love of your life the first time yeah. you fall in love, you'll never fall in love like that again yeah. and then you do a couple more times so after like the fourth time you're like oh i see this pattern yeah. and and so with all other things in life too you start seeing these patterns and you know how to handle them mm. rather than but that only can happen with time, right? Yeah, you can't do absolutely. that as a, a 15 year old and be like, now I know the answer of how to fall in love. No, you have mm. to go through all the hard things yeah. in order to get to this place where we're at and an understanding of how you said, like seeing your, your life in a different way, but that mm. only comes with like being here on this planet for X amount of years. Yeah. True, it's true. Just, I mean, yeah. I think, cause I mean, I mean we you, you know, because the because the world is sort of so much more, I, I, like you're saying, you know, kind of complex and and it, and and sort of difficult to to sort of work out. And you know, we need people more than ever. But that, that this uncertain, I say, we need people more than ever. We need our kind of. I, I really do think, you know, that we need those sort of human connections more than you know, kind of more than ever. But also, I think our, our friendships, our relationships change. I mean, if I think back to my, like my mum and dad, they had you know kind of friends for life it was almost yeah. like you, you know they would stay friends with somebody you know right. people may may come and go occasionally but you, you know generally speaking they would i don't think that's as common these days and i you think it, I, no, 
No, yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm guess I'm talking, you know, from, from, I mean, I can only really talk from my sort of personal experience, but I think it's, you know, as I change as a person, um, you know, and what, what's important to me, my, my sort of belief systems, you know, my values and things like that. Mm-hmm. I think there's the, 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 the those those things, those attributes are just more, much more kind of volatile. And I, and I think that people move, change at different rates. And, and I find that with, with friendships that, that can get impacted as well. Maybe that's just me. I, I don't know, but. Well, I think it's like the world that we live in right now. We used to have these families where grandma, grandpa was around, parent, kid, yeah. dogs, grandkids. And so you could, um, bounce ideas off of all these generations. And I think that that mm. is very important to, to listen to your elders, to listen to younger people, because mm. that it's fresh ideas. And also like people who have been around forever, they can give yeah. you ideas. And I don't think we have that anymore. We're all alone. Each yeah. of us, people are having less children. People want to yeah. be single and that's great. It's cool. But, yeah. um, it's a new way of being alone and yeah. and friendships are different. Your, your parents had these friends maybe because they were in this neighborhood that they never, maybe they didn't leave. They didn't, and so the they friends didn't leave. are there. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. And so this is, a, it's a new way today of being in the world. Mm. People can travel more or like, I think about my friends, I have some solid friends, but I'm also just like never in one place. Mm. And I always want to make a connection with people, but I think like deep down, I'm always leaving. <laughs> yeah, to, true. You know? Yeah. But, but also it, it could be like being an only kid. It's, it's weird to get really close to certain people because I'm used to, I, you know, that's how I, I, I was raised being alone. Mm. And sometimes when you make a, I don't know if you feel this way, but sometimes if I, if I get too close to someone or if someone starts depending on me or this is, this is a perfect example. When I go to like a cafe and I get the same drink, if I go to the cafe and they're like, we know what drink you want. Cause you come in here so often, this is the drink. Then I stop like going to that cafe. That, that pisses you off. <laughs> not, not pisses me off, but it's like, you know me too well now. Now I got well. go. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. That's really interesting. So I think about that with like friendships. I I love having close friends and I love making connections with people. But I I feel like personally for me, like when sometimes if someone starts to get too close subconsciously, I kind of shut myself off. I think, you know, I I think I do that as well um, because, Mm, you just made me think actually because when I was when I shifted from um kind of primary school to high school my parents took me from it put me in another school in a in in a school that was different that was further away from the one where all my primary school friends were going to so so basic so I had to travel further and I lost touch with those friends that had been with me for the first you know kind of well probably you know 10 years 10 11 years of my life and i think that then there was there was perhaps i'm I'm kind of thinking aloud now there was perhaps something in me that was um well this could happen again you know and i don't want to go through that that pain of losing those because because basically i lost you know i lost touch with them even though they lived on the same street you know they developed their own group you know, right. of, of, of friends from the from the new school. And I hired yeah. to develop mine from another school, which is further away, which was more difficult to get to. And so it was difficult, more difficult for me to keep in touch with people as I got older. And perhaps it was something that made me sort of be Shut wary. That. Shut that part down. Yeah. 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 I don't know if that was for me the same thing i've been in situations where i've had to be in a new situation and i feel uncomfortable and so um and it's or actually actually sometimes it's losing somebody Mm. where 
you kind of have to, sh- for me personally, shutting something down. Because mm. you've lost somebody. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, no, and I don't mean like uh, like losing someone to a death or anything, but there's people that like come in and out of your life. And, yeah. um, and sometimes you have to shut yourself off for that. And maybe yeah. that's it too, is like when you come too close to somebody um, mm. and it's protecting yourself. Yeah. When someone leaves you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and I think those are things that are... Ki- carried over from childhood too yeah yeah um and this is something that i'm talking about too is like uh being raised by a single mom and Mm. not having a father figure around and thinking like yeah that's cool because the dad was not around but i never had him around so it should be fine because i never had to deal with him Mm. and then realizing later actually no i think there was something to that Mm. and so in that way it's like a protection we're trying to protect ourselves like you said you're like you went to this new school you lost your old friends and you don't like that feeling so that's when we shut ourselves off right we have we we're protecting our our, protecting ourselves yeah our egos um and that's the scary part is like to move forward through that is very it's very hard to like it's very hard yeah open that door again and pull back those feelings and try to understand like why did i why did i shut that part down yeah and can i open this door because behind that door it's really fucking hard it's really really yeah but um in order to push through sometimes you have to open that door or you're forced to and um and that's kind that's kind of what happened to me last year i was forced to go through something uh through like people I've met and relationships and um either yeah you're like um some people do this through meditation finding their rebirth how we talked about um or really are going to therapy Mm. or something sometimes something really big happens to you and it I had a paradigm shift and things open but that's that's the thing is like can you push forward through this hard time do you want to take that chance and that risk because it's scary it's scary and this pulls us back again to like music do you take this chance and you Mm. play this thing live and you you see what happens or do you edit it all and do like close the door Mm. and be safe and make sure everything looks proper and pretty to the outside world but you know that something is still missing inside of you. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean yeah. you know, the, the, those sort of changes or, or you, you know, events, you know, sort of happenings, uh, uh, you know, so, yeah, I mean, so seismic, you know, when, when, when they, when they happen, you know, I, yeah. I went through, I went through, um, I went through a separation. It was sort of seventeen years, nearly seventeen years ago now, and it it's still difficult. Um, you, you separation from a partner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seventeen years ago. Yeah, and today it's still hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, you know, there are things that are still are still hard about it, and and you know, I, I guess you know the, the the those sort of events are are sort of really seismic in in your life and I said you know my, both my parents died yeah. you know those sort of things even though I had a a you know relationship perhaps that was not as close that you know to my parents as, as in some ways that that many people have been you know still when those those events happen you know it, it's okay I've got to now summon up whatever I've learn through my life and you're not thinking about this consciously but i've I've got to summon up this this whatever it is to try and you know sort of deal with this and to to kind of get get through it and you know the those sort of things are you you know where you get into those sort of situations of uncertainty you know and really uncomfortable it's fucking hard hard 
hard. Yeah, and you either like, it's like I either can stop here and be stagnant and just kind of die here in this place. Yeah. Or yeah. I can jump over this cliff yeah. and take this chance because what I'd rather jump and, and maybe there's an awful thing over this mm. cliff or maybe mm. there's a grassy you knoll. I have no idea. And I'm safe. No once idea. I, but I almost, I would rather take that leap mm. than be in this place. I never know if I never yeah. looked over that cliff, I would just always be thinking about what was over that cliff. Yeah. And so to me, I would rather take that chance. And sometimes that's not always the best thing to do. <laughs> sometimes yeah. it brings you to the wrong place or um, to not think things through logically. Because a mm. lot of times I'm, I'm not always logical or um, methodical. Like sometimes I can live in a fantasy world, I think. Yeah. And um, so to be grounded, um, is something I wish I had more of sometimes. Yeah. yeah. But also uh, to to have hope and be optimistic. Like I think it seems to me that you are an optimistic person and you have hope and yeah. you think of humanity as a whole. Yeah. You know, and so and that's the only thing that we can really do. We we yeah. if we if we say that everything is like gone to shit and it's dark yeah. like why should we even be here we have yeah. to be hopeful and i i always i always have hope and optimism for other people and i believe in people and mm. we can only do that if we believe in ourselves also like if someone yeah. believes in you but they don't believe in themselves it's hard to really truly believe them yeah i guess it, yeah it comes to this, this sort of I, I guess in a way sort of self-love it you is know, it, it is that you know, really, you know, once once you have that, or you know, even even aware, an awareness of it, of the, right. you, you know, you know, maybe if you if you if you're if you're aware that you're perhaps not in the right place, that you you don't have that, and you can work on that, then that's that's something. Yeah, you, and that's something you can share with other people too, because like a self awareness or self love is actually very like personally for me is very hard mm. when I when you truly say. And not to get into the weird space of like, I love myself. Yeah. If you really get into the nitty gritty of it, for me, that's very hard to like truly accept. Yeah. Of course, you can say it. And yeah, you mean it on the surface, but like to really, really mean that is yeah. hard. But I think as I'm, as I'm like going through all this, like the process of learning about yourself and learning how to care for yourself is also if you can share that with other people and other people share like what we're doing right now, this is yeah. very helpful to me. And also I just, I made a new friend, this yeah. uh, Jenny, she just gave me this Reiki session, like over yeah. a phone call. That was just yesterday. And to have trust in people or when I didn't know this before, but to be vulnerable is actually okay around yeah. other people. Cause yeah. to me, I always had a facade how, you know how we're talking about like you had to go to this new school and you put up a wall and I think that was part of me too like creating this like and also the way we're raised you're not supposed to show any any kind of like fault or fear or sadness yeah. you gotta be strong and so when you're raised that way that's what you think you're supposed to project in the world if you see this flaw in me yeah. then you're not gonna like me or accept me yeah. But I'm realizing the people that do show me those things are the ones that I am more intrigued by or that I can relate to and I yeah. learn from them more. Yeah. So so I'm learning that for myself too, like to be yeah. more transparent or vulnerable. Yeah. And it's a beautiful thing too, like to be on stage when you watch uh, a band or a musician. Like I think of Sean in Cat Power. Yeah. And how yeah. he is on stage when you see someone so vulnerable whatever state it's in it's true and it's honest yeah. and and you get something out of that mm. and whatever the thing is like when we're talking about taking a chance with playing music and being out there mm. um you you find that beauty in that rather than them trying to create a facade um but also there is I 
there's the other side of a entertainment side and of course you want that too in a different yeah. way but speaking of like vulnerability and being open to people i, th- I think i i completely agree. I, th- I think vulnerability is a really really kind of powerful and um you know kind of positive trait to you know to have you know to be able to sort of show show that you know it it, i you know like if you take taking you know for 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 anybody in whatever you know it doesn't matter what what job you do or what you know what what work you do it doesn't matter just that just sort of showing that that kind of vulnerability i i just think is is a really uh you know, it's kind of part of self awareness. You know, it's in it, and it, I, I think there's there is something definitely in that. I mean, I, I think in in music as well. When I see somebody that that is is vulnerable, like I went to see a a, a band uh, Thursday night in London, uh, the Hundred Club uh, called Benefits, who are very um, socially aware, very political, and you, you know, Kingsley is is he's the the, the singer. Um, and it, and it's a, it's a, it's a very dense noise and kind of like experimental electronic you know sort of very dense noise and but he's very vulnerable you know and I think that I I can completely relate to that you yeah. know and that that immediately oh. forms a connection you know where you can see, you know you can see where each other is sort of coming from you know with that. Yeah. I, think, I just I just think it's a really powerful thing to have. And it's a funny thing too, though, when you think about like in our social media world, vulnerability is not there. We we present ourselves in these photos and these things. Yeah. You know, yeah. Time, time, we talk about this all the time. What is the most beautiful picture? Here's my happiest moment. I'm doing this cool thing. Yeah. And yeah. that is the least vulnerable yeah. place to be, you know. And but if you talk to anybody, people want to see people's vulnerable sides. Yeah. And you want to know the real person. Um, and so to project what we want to project this, like what mm. we want the world to see versus who we are. Um, but even when I, if I post something sometimes, like I just posted something and I was like, well, I could post this like nicer photo of me, but this other photo looks more real. Like it's a real photo and it looks like I'm having a good time or whatever the thing is. Mm. Cause when I start, if I look through posts of people and it's just like the happiest, perfect pose and everyone is like framed, I'm like, I get bored of it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, absolutely. It looks like, it looks like a blank stare. I may as well be looking at like, you just drew a smiley face with a pencil and yeah. a paper. I like to see the real thing. So yeah. Thinking about social media and what we present to the world versus like, to be vulnerable, those are those are the people that we really become like more um, interested in if Absolutely. they're ready to be vulnerable. Absolutely. And and that's also, but it is letting go of a part of you into the world. Mm. You know, I, I was you just just made me think. So, I, like on, on music, I, I was um, a good friend of mine is um, Dave Barbarossa, who's the um, drummer in um adam and the ants and bow wow wow and um he he was he a few years ago he was teaching me drums so i was learning to play i did I was learning for he was teaching me maybe about sort of th- three three or four years something like that and he was great but he i had this tendency to rush and it was it was and i could i could see exactly what it was it was just like well if i rush it then nobody will hear it Okay. You know, so people won't oh, hear, my, I, hear my mistakes. So I, I would kind of rush it. And he told me to, he was telling me to slow down and yeah, think, yeah. just thinking about, I was just thinking about the self love thing and about, because he said to me, um, think, think of this when you're playing the drums, think of, you know, when you're playing a particular sort of, you know, kind of sequence or anything like that, just sort of think of it as a journey. Don't be rushing to get to the destination. Just enjoy right, the right. journey that you're going on. And it just made me yeah. think about when we were just talking about self love that thinking of that as a as a kind of journey that that perhaps you don't you, you know you don't get there straight away but it's so that's okay you know you just you know treat it as something that you know is happening is happening yeah it's just continuous it's just a kind of right. continuous thing to sort of teach yourself and to enjoy it as you're going on i mean that's theoretical of course but if you 
perhaps if you if we can all kind of think of that in that way right. and i think that's what it is is enjoying this moment each time you're hitting that snare every single time you're enjoying that one snare to the next one instead yeah. of the overall what is the thing yeah enjoy each moment each measure until you, it's over <laughs> when you when you were talking earlier about when you're playing in a you know in an orchestra or a group or something like that when something clicks i yeah. mean i mean talk i mean something about what you know when you kind of get a beat right yeah that feeling i know oh my god it's the best in the world <laughs> isn't it oh my god yeah yeah that's what i'm saying when it's so solid and you feel that and that's yeah. like that's what we should think about when we're playing you yeah. know like that moment and you can see that in someone when they feel it yeah when you're watching someone live you know when they feel it in that way yeah you know? totally at, at, rather than like they have perfected that they know it through and through which is cool too but to see joy in someone when they are playing whether yeah. it's good or bad whatever i've played with musicians that didn't know how to play their instrument at all and they're the most beautiful musicians you know yeah yeah um, or like it's like the same as like outsider art. Yeah. These artists that they just had visions come into them and they've created art without any schooling. Some of those are the most beautiful things. Yeah. And it's it's the same with music. Like if you enjoy it, then you will I the people that watch you will enjoy you as well. Like yeah. when the thing becomes if the music is what you are don't think about yourself. I, I was talking to someone about this too. It's like your ego, you let go of ego. Don't mm. think about you and people watching you. This is kind of what, when I'm playing, I feel like I do this. It's like, it's not about watching me. It's about like, the music is this child and this baby. Yeah. The music is the thing that you want to present to the world. Yeah. And you are just, it's like, you're the conduit for this thing to happen. And, yeah. and you want to share this thing so when you let go of like whatever form you are as your ego, it's more freeing that way. Like think totally. of this music rather than you personally, someone's watching you personally. Yeah. They're watching the music and you just happen to be there. <laughs> it's really true. You know? Really true that. So I, I find like, I, I've done that unconsciously. And when I look back on it, that's kind of how I've gotten through maybe uh, tough situations. Like when I first started playing with Sean, I was thrown into this world that was like, I had only played small venues and then I was playing these huge shows. Huge shows and you, yeah. you got to figure out how to do that. And I was playing to a click track that I had never done. I learned how to do that. Wow. Uh, and so I was like, you either sink or swim and you just got to go for it. Um, but um, I lost my train of thought. Uh, yeah, just going. Um, kind of going with the flow and just sort of using you, almost like it, going it's, with the flow. Oh yes, and you you are the conduit. Like yeah. I was like, I have to. I can't stop this show because I feel uncomfortable. I'm listening to a click track. This track's gonna go without me. I better figure out how to I make better this figure out. Oh, <laughs> and so if you're, I was forced into. You got to keep going and that was actually the best learning lesson too because yeah. i um to be thrown into something it's like someone throws you in the deep end yeah. and you got to figure it out because if you stop then that's the end of it so that yeah. was actually the perfect way for me to learn is with like this click track you can't jump off this train you're gonna yeah. die because this train is rolling it, forward it's just going yeah with or without so that's, you that's kind of how i was forced to keep going and then like we did away with a click track, mm. but with this mindset of like, I got to keep going. Um, then I pushed through other things that were hard and, mm. and like realizing like, this is not about me. This is about this music. And what are we creating for this audience? Mm. You know, um, uh, I'm just, I just have, yeah, like I said, I, I happen to be here. Most people don't even notice me as the drummer in the back. Like, I think that's also why I chose drums too. I mean, I watch drummers too, but you know what I mean? Like yeah. a lot of times it's like, you get to be in the back, you're sitting down, no one really sees you. Um, <laughs> but it is, you're an intricate part of the thing. 
Absolutely. So to be hidden, but also uh, a big part of it. Mm. Um, but, but like I said, like when you think of it as like the music is what I want to share with you instead of like you seeing my outfit and what am I wearing or who am mm. I as a person? And I'm not saying that's not also part of it because of course we still have our egos. Yeah. We want them to be like petted and we want people to tell us, yeah, that was a great job. Um, but when, uh, if we can let go of that and trust that these sounds that we create is what is pulling people in, mm. then I feel like it's, for me, that's easier. And it's almost a shield. Like the, the sound is yeah. a shield also. Mm. Um, you're, here's the sound. I'm just over here. This is the sound here and I'm behind it. Yeah in that way so with, with, with you know sort of where, where you are now in in your life i mean the the you, you know what what what's kind of you know sort of coming coming next not not just sort of musically but in in terms of how you you know kind of live live your life or is it is it literally sort of one day you know just seeing what happens each day at this moment yes literally yeah. it's it's yeah. like day by day. Like I said, I'm, I've am i been living out of a, two suitcases for like a year. Mm. And um, I'm going to New York next week. Yeah. But, and I'm looking for like a sublet in June and July. But I don't have that yet. Or maybe mm. I'll go to California. Um, that's another thing, like really trying to let go of control for me right now. Yeah. To try to predict things. Because for my whole life... I was like, I need these things in order. I need order. to know what exactly is going to happen. Otherwise, I feel chaos inside. Yeah. And so I've been trying to like embrace chaos. Yeah. Yeah. In this way to be okay with it. Because like they said, you know, the only constant is change. Change is like the only, everything is always changing. We don't know what's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. And when I personally can let go of control and, and embrace chaos is... I think for me right now is the only way for me to move forward. Mm. If I can't embrace chaos right now, I don't know how to handle my life because yeah. that's all it is right now is chaos. Everything is, is unpredictable. To Just sort right of up now. in the air. Yeah. Yeah. But it can also be kind of a beautiful thing because our whole life, we do have these road things. We pay our rent, we go to our job, we come home, we eat, we make dinner, we watch our show. So here's a moment in my life that I have complete chaos. Maybe I should like accept that because it's not always that way. Yeah. You know, and learn from these moments that are happening yeah. to me, even though they're hard. It's not, this is not fun. No, I, I, I can, I can, I can totally, I can totally <laughs> empathize some, with that for sure. Some parts are fun. Yeah. You know, these magical moments that happen to you. Um, but a lot of it, it's not fun or it's hard. Uh, so when you say, where am I moving forward? I, I literally don't know. Day to day mm. is a new thing. There are, there are projects that I would like to do with certain people and yeah. ideas I have uh, and fantasies of what I would like. Mm. I don't know how, uh, if those will come into fruition or not, but um, when uh I was talking about manifestation with a friend of mine mm. and manifesting things, not just for yourself, but for you and your friends and your family and people all around you. So I guess like that is a part of thinking forward, just trying to manifest good things yeah. for how cheesy it sounds, but for all of us, yeah, all yeah. of us together, what happens to me, I can share with you what happens to you can sh you can share with me yeah and so these these are the only things I have nothing tangible to hang on to right now yeah. it's in the world it's out there and it's my connections and meeting you and talking to you um and figuring things out through these conversations yeah that's the only thing I have I have nothing tangible I think that yeah I mean I think the the you know kind of the, the it, it perhaps doesn't make it any any sort of easier because because we we are 
no matter what our outlook is, we're still conditioned by society because it's around and, and how society is structured because it's all around us. It's unavoidable. But, you know, the whole, the whole kind of idea of, of things sort of being in flux, I guess if you, if you look at, you know, kind of like the animal kingdom, and I've become more aligned to the kind of thinking of the, the you know, the way that the human race, the human species sort of thinks that it's superior to the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom is just ridiculous. Yeah. You know, that we should all think of ourselves as one. You know, that the, the animal kingdoms live in, you, you know, through just total instinct. Yeah, you know, exactly. and their the lives, their lives are in flux all the time. You know, the you know, there's, right. you know, if you're out in the, you know, kind of plains of Africa, there's danger all around for certain for for every every kind of animal that exists, and and yeah. it it's really no different for us. But we become conditioned that life should be led a certain way, right? And and but conceptually, there's no reason why it should be. It, it perhaps doesn't help, but it's. You know, it's it, it is a it is something that is I think is kind of quite natural for us to be like that. To work on instinct. Or, yes, yes, yeah. and 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 for and for and for uncertainty to be part of our lives, but because yeah. of the way that society suggest mainstream society suggests that you know it's the still the the three stage life of you know you kind of get an education, you work, and then you retire. Right. And we're yeah. not in that. The reality, we we are not in that thing. That the, the I, I did this. I did quite a lot of sort of research and study around this multi-stage life, which is much more in flux now than than it was for for my parents and probably even for me when I was born. What what I would have been expected to do. Things are much more in flux. Yeah, and I was just I, I had just seen something online about someone that was like um, to live a more fulfilled, longer life. Uh, practice like going into deep cold baths and then mm -hmm. being really hot running um, putting yourself in these physical things that are uncomfortable to mm -hmm. you and mm -hmm. it keeps you younger and brighter and sharper um, yeah. and that's who we are as humans because yeah. that's what when we were cave people cave women yeah. men yeah that was our instinct was to yeah. We didn't know what was happening. Like, is there a tiger that's going to eat us? Like, that's our natural instinct is to survive. Yeah. And yeah. right now, we don't think on instinct as much anymore. Which, but I think that's our natural thing to want that because we're yeah. that's how we used to survive, and that's Absolutely. in our nature. Um, so, but also, you were saying about how society is—that's how we perceive society to want us. But as a an only child did you ever feel less of that because you're an only child and you're in your own world like coming up with imaginary stories for yourself because I feel like I was in my own world kind of without mm. really noticing that as much and I also didn't have like a a typical t type of being raised mm. as a kid but I, I think like that world even though it's there, I don't think I it affected me as much. Yeah, and I'm not a child or just not the way I was raised. I think I, I think I, yeah, I definitely had a had an imagination. You know, for for yeah, for 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 how I would live, but it was it was I think it was sort of tempered by perhaps the tempered. It was probably probably overruled by the um the the thing the 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 feeling that i had to um please my mum and dad right right you know I so that, that it, yeah it was never yeah so, so i don't think that that kind of imagination was allowed to i mean kind of like you know my, my probably my biggest act of rebel rebellion was was um well, two actually. One was the first one was saying I'm not going to church anymore, and then uh, and then the second one was was stopping playing the cello because I I love punk rock music too much. I loved it more than the cello. <laughs> well, it's funny. I was just thinking this just remind you were like you were your parents told you to be a certain way. So thinking about we have certain things that are similar because we're only children, but I also was raised by a single mom that was mm. like 
she a beautiful person mother yeah. everything but like thinking about I just thought of this right now, but I remember being in the bathroom and looking at a tile and being like, oh, mom, it looks like there's a little face on this tile. She's like, oh, why don't you take a pen and draw the face on the tile? And me being a kid, I was like nine. I'm like, but wait, isn't that like graffiti and defacing our bathroom? <laughs> and I just thought of that right now. I totally forgot about that. But like my mom is like, go ahead, make graffiti on the bathroom wall when most parents are like, don't even touch the wall with the dirty don't hands. touch the wall yes absolutely right and here is my mom like go ahead like defile the bathroom wall and maybe in my head this is just one part but um thinking like oh, my mom is obviously doesn't understand that i shouldn't be making graffiti on the wall i think i should be more of an adult here <laughs> see 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 that, that there you go there's your exact so that, there's your exact kind of like um societal kind of conformism because i was doing i was um i used duolingo i'm learning spanish so i was, I was sort of on duolingo and one of the things was about this, this sort of kids uh sort of drawing on the wall and you know that one of the parents saying you must uh don't draw on the wall you must yeah. help me clean it off there you go <laughs> see that's the thing yeah but see, so that's what I'm thinking too, is like, we're rebelling against our parents all the time. And in a way, <laughs> um, I, I rebelled against my mom, but in a way that was like conforming, like I, I was trying conforming. to be a good human by not drawing on the wall. And I think there's confusion in that when you're like uh, trying to be yeah. a kid and you want to draw on a wall, but now someone says that's okay to draw on the wall. And you're like, well, I can't, there's nothing to rebel well, I can't. against. Yes. To really rebel against my mom let me do whatever I wanted to do, but I also knew that I needed to be a good person. Wow. She's gonna be to this and be laughing because, <laughs> uh, yeah, because there's at a point where like uh, I I feel like, of course she was a great parent, always there. She was a beautiful parent, yeah. but at some point I feel like I had to become my own parent. Yeah. In a way and and like become an adult quickly mm. me not even knowing that at the time but when i look back on it it's yeah. like taking care of myself in a different way yeah not, no i not, hate it. it wouldn't be there for me but she had things going on in her life that she had to figure out and she was trying to raise me as a single mom yeah. and to to go to work yeah and to go to work in order to raise a kid but then you can't be home for the kid when if there's two parents yeah. someone's going to be there you know these kinds of things mm. so what is out of her hands she has to go to work so yeah she can't be there for me so of course i have to become my own type of like i've got to raise myself to a certain extent yeah. you know um but in that way there was nothing to rebel against yeah that's that's so, really interesting but also to have that freedom this person gave me freedom my mother mm. gave me freedom to be whatever I wanted to. I had no boundaries, mm. which is also a scary thing as a kid because you don't know it. But as a kid, I think you want boundaries. You want someone to tell you mm. this is OK. This isn't OK. Get in the car. I'm going to drive you here. Even if you don't want to, you know yeah. that someone's got got you. They got your back because they know more than you at that time. Yeah. But, but when you're a kid, you got to if that's not there, you got to figure it out. Mm right so um but yeah this is all part of the learning thing and what what forms us this what is well so I, I never did graffiti since then <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i've ever drawn on a wall <laughs> maybe other things but no no graffiti <laughs> so whenever you lived in new york you weren't graffitiing on the subways or anything like that um, no. No, that was not your thing i don't think so no maybe like in like <laughs> You know, you like put your, you draw something, but yeah, no, like there's, that. A, there's always a quick look around, make sure nobody's looking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I mean, if if I if I may say so, I think that the what whatever lesson lessons you've uh, and, and kind of things you've learned over, you know, from you know through through your childhood and your life, just from from this conversation that we've had, you you. The, the way that you're going to check you're going to handle i th this this ch the changes that are that are happening in your life that the, you know the uncertainty i think you you you're gonna you're gonna smash it and you'll you'll 
you will get through you know the, the you, you know living with with you know a period of, of uncertainty however long that that may be because clearly you, you know you you the, you know your emotional intelligence and you know self-awareness you know is is huge and i think i think that is so powerful to have well th th that's very cool to hear thank you um yeah and that's the only thing i mean i appreciate that um yeah to move forward that's the only thing we can do right it's the only thing you can do and you you know you kind of like we're you know at the end of it we 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 are we are resilient yeah you, you know resilience ebbs and flows always it's kind of bit like a muscle isn't it you know and it kind of needs replenishing right. and stuff but you know we, we we generally are resilient and resourceful and you know when we find ourselves in situations we we work out ways of doing it we might not know what what they are but again i think this, it's a weird thing that this sort of intuition and this instinct sort of can can take over and whether right. that instinct is driven by stuff that we've learned over over our lives you know however however it may, I'm not. I'm not a psychologist. So I don't know how exactly it works, but it, it seems to me that you know, a combination of just just that kind of gut instinct plus also the, the stuff that you've you've learned, yeah, gets us through difficult okay. times. Different things, yeah. And the only other thing I feel like um, what I didn't know too was like to reach out to other people when yeah. you are in a time of like uncertainty. Yeah. And like, I'm thinking about something, someone specific mm. uh, who is going through uncertain times. And like, when I think about myself, it's hard to ask for help sometimes, yeah. or to just like, even just get in the world. Like I gotta be, when you are in your own mind and you're thinking about things all the time by yourself, you can go into a dark spiral. I and totally, like, being, totally hear you. Yeah. Being an only child too, like being alone Absolutely. in that way. And I have to remind myself too to like reach out to people or accept people if if they want to be there for me. And I can't always do that. I'm still yeah. learning how to do that. Yeah. But um, I think that it's not um, weak or a sign of like being less of a person if you yeah. need to reach out to somebody. Yeah, you're absolutely you know? right. I've I've had the same. I've had people, you know, say to me, look, you know come and talk to me you know just just pick up the phone whatever and i say yes you're, yeah, going, that's really you're going through a hard yeah, time yeah when, when, whenever i've been through through anything you yeah. know and and i never do you don't yeah we don't because we want to figure it out ourselves right yeah yeah and exactly. do we do we sometimes yeah. we do we could probably do it probably a bit do it a bit better <laughs> if there was somebody else <laughs> <laughs> sometimes right i mean there are things that only you can figure out yourself yeah, and, right, yeah and no matter no matter what someone tells you at that moment it's going to fall on deaf ears because you're like no if it hits you at the right time at the right point in your life it can affect you and sometimes it is just in our moment we have to figure that ourselves. and how long yeah. that takes is it a day is it a week a month a year? yeah it could be years it could be a could lifetime be absolutely yeah this is the thing you know it can be yeah it can, can be that sort of journey you might not figure it out in your lifetime but you can get yourself into a into a better place um yeah. you, you know or a place where you feel okay that's that's okay i'm kind of okay with that just sort of move yeah. on it, it, it you know it's depends on the situation doesn't it yeah yeah. Wow. <laughs> Big stuff. Big stuff. <laughs> Big stuff. Isn't that that's a cookie, isn't it? Big stuff. Oreo cookies. Is it? I think they have a big stuff Oreo cookie. There's like extra filling. We just did oh, extra, extra we did an extra filling cookie podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, yeah. That is an amazing chat, Aliana. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really this has appreciate been really it. Cool. I appreciate it too. I see the sun is like falling down on you. The sun's going down on you now. The sun's going down. The 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 gigs. <laughs>
the gig's calling. <laughs> I need to go. The rain is falling on my side. It's oh, rain. is it really? It's a, yeah. it's a lovely day here. It's been fan fantastic, fantastic, which is, well, as you know, a very rare thing. <laughs> In that, yeah. One of it the doesn't last happen time. that often. It isn't, so you better go out there and enjoy that sunshine. Thanks for listening to the show, and I really hope that you enjoyed it and that you'll tune in for the next episode. In the meantime, it would be really awesome if you could rate and review the show and also share it with any friends who you think might enjoy it.